much for me, and I'd like to start by thanking uh, Canton for the invitation to speak to you today, and also to welcome the emergence of uh, Counterfire, and it's uh, certainly a very uh, impressive website. And I think uh, the orientation uh, of Counterfire uh, is an important part of how we take the left forward, uh, how we learn from the good and bad experiences uh, of uh, recent years. Uh, and how we address the huge gap uh, which is where the left ought to be uh, in uh, the political and economic crisis today. I have a feeling that while this is something those of us on the left have been talking about for some time, it now might be on the verge of becoming an issue that's going to engage a lot more people in the very, very near future uh, if Thursday pans out uh, as predicted when suddenly there will be uh, a realisation that the shape, the boundaries of politics have changed and that we need uh, to, that, that left, um, the left's absence, relative absence, uh, is something that uh, millions of people are going to wake up to, wonder about and want to uh, address. And I also feel that the, the boundaries, the relationship between political organisations of the left, both of which are uh, vanishingly small, uh, and mass movements is changing. It's changing whether, whether we like it or not. And how one uh, works for the same uh, objectives and values that we've always held in this new situation uh, is another issue which uh, I think Counterfire will have a big part to play in uh, addressing. Now, on the, uh, the matter to hand today, it is clearly part of this uh, overall political uh, recomposition that we have to address the question of Islamophobia uh, and uh, the attacks on the Muslim community in this country, where I think we have to reflect on how much the boundaries have shifted and what is acceptable in terms of attacks uh, on Muslims over the last few years without anyone shouting about it or at least shouting loudly enough about it uh, at, uh, uh, at the time. Uh, I mean, there's two things that very different sort of things which I think illustrate the point in addition to the uh, many examples uh, that, or contacts that Shamil gave. One of course is the brutal sentences that have been handed down to Muslim and only Muslim uh, demonstrators uh, arising out of the Gaza demonstrations uh, uh, a year and a half ago uh, where uh, a deliberately draconian sentences designed to intimidate uh, have been uh, imposed uniformly on uh, Muslims, that's to say black people uh, in our uh, society, uh, and there has been uh, a mounting protest uh, against it, uh, but as yet not enough, uh, and this sort of absolutely racist exercise uh, of uh, justice uh, is one uh, symptom of, of the problem we're facing. The second and very different one has been the attacks uh, on um, uh, television on Muslim political activity. Uh, for example, when it was uh, revealed uh, sensationally uh, that uh, uh, Muslims, religious Muslims, were getting involved in politics in Tower Hamlets, uh, and that this was a scandal, uh, you know, the like of which hadn't been seen uh, since uh, um, uh, well, the militant tendency, or uh, 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 even worse, that here suddenly there was a choice now uh, for Muslims that if you don't get engaged in mainstream politics, in this case joining the Labour Party, uh, then you are refusing to integrate, you're being separatist, uh, and you're trying to build a wall between the Muslim community and the rest of society. If you do join mainstream political organisations, obviously you're trying to take it over. Uh, you're trying to <laughs> secretly uh, uh, use it for your own end. So actually there is no answer then available to Muslims other than to simply be quiet, turn up on polling day, vote for uh, the same old parties and don't try and advance uh, any uh, political interest uh, in the way that every other group, every other interest group in society is acknowledged to have a, uh, have a right to. So why is the Stop the War Coalition um, get involved in this issue? I'm putting the question here because it is raised even within the Stop the War Coalition uh, that really we should focus exclusively on stopping the war uh, and not get 
dragged off into confronting the question of Islamophobia. And this comes when we hear this argument from people who are themselves utterly opposed to Islamophobia, so let's not uh, misrepresent the position. But I think there are three reasons. The first is that Islamophobia reinforces the case for war. Uh, the, you know, of course, fewer and fewer people aren't buying into the case for war uh, at all, but such cases as made, for example, the continuing war uh, in Afghanistan, uh, rests heavily on constructing a portrayal of Muslims uh, uh, built around ideas of fanaticism, fundamentalism, barbarism, uh, backwardness, which of course reinforces, to the extent that that is accepted, reinforces the case for sort of neo-colonial intervention in Afghanistan and for that matter uh, in other uh, Muslim countries. So challenging the presentations, uh, the Islamophobic presentation of Muslim uh, people uh, is at uh, the ideological level a vital part of our struggle uh, against uh, war. The second aspect is obviously uh, the Muslim community in Britain has been an absolutely integral and militant part of the anti-war movement uh, uh, throughout. It was one of the remarkable developments uh, the Stop the War Coalition in 2002, 2003, uh, and beyond, uh, that uh, the Muslim community played a full, equal, indeed leading part uh, in the campaign uh, against the Iraq War. And that is something that has rattled the establishment uh, no end. And if uh, Muslim numbers on our demonstrations are now smaller than they were then, that is, I believe, in large part due, certainly not due to any change of mind on the issues uh, amongst British Muslims, but it's, it's due to the sustained attack on their rights uh, to uh, uh, protest and to demonstrate, particularly after 2005, the attempts to drive them off the streets, of which, of course, the sentencing uh, 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 arising from the Gaza demonstrations, where Muslims played the leading and most militant part, is, uh, uh, is a symptom. So it's defending the unity and integrity of the movement <coughs> demands uh, that we challenge Islamophobia. And thirdly, at the most general sense, we can know that the attacks on British Muslims are also the thin end of a wedge for attacks on far wider uh, groups uh, in society. The attacks on civil liberties, uh, for example, the detention, the person's detention without uh, trial, special measures being brought in. We don't have to know Pastor Nimol or off by heart uh, to realise that when these measures are brought in, always temporarily and always against a tiny group of people, they then remain in the statute book to be used against everyone uh, forever uh, if they're allowed uh, to get away with it. So simply as a mass organisation in civil society, the Stop the War Coalition has uh, a vital interest in not allowing uh, the attacks on the Muslim community to become uh, uh, entrenched uh, and to leave the Muslim community isolated. It simply won't work uh, like uh, that. Now, how do we develop the campaign uh, against uh, Islamophobia? The Stop the War Coalition, as you know, the, the leaflets at the back is holding a conference uh, on uh, June 6th where all these things can be discussed much more fully. Obviously, I want to just give a few indications as to my personal views here. And one thing is it, it seems to me we have to attack Islamophobia as Islamophobia. There are a lot of completely well-meaning people, uh, and a well-meaning is normally meant as an insult, I don't use it as an insult here, uh, um, uh, but people who are against Islamophobia, but who sort of want to bundle it all up in some other question where we can sort of confront, or, or we can oppose Islamophobia without talking about Muslims. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's an attempt to sort of bundle it up in anti-fascism. Now, anti-fascism, of course, is still uh, a, a very broad and popular uh, cause uh, of you know, the number of people uh, who actually support fascism is very, very small, uh, happily. Uh, but, of course, the number of people who are holding uh, prejudiced and reactionary ideas about Muslims is very, very much wider. So while anti-fascism is necessary, it is, not, uh, uh, it is not sufficient. Nor, I think, the idea of treating it as an issue of religious freedom. I don't believe that is uh, uh, sufficient either. Of course, there are elements of an attack on freedom. Apparently today the EDL in Dudley, following their demonstration a few weeks ago, have now established themselves on top of the, on the roof of a mosque uh, or something, or on the roof of the construction site for a mosque. I'm not quite sure what the, what the, story, uh, uh, the story is. Now if you're attacking a mosque, you are attacking religious freedom. That's fairly, uh, that's fairly evident. But it's only a very small part of the problem, and I think it is 
slightly missing the point to say this is part of a general campaign for religious freedom, because religious freedom, of all the problems we're facing in Britain today, attack on the religious freedom is not really the most uh, serious, and mixing it up with uh, uh, really very small or peripheral uh, attacks on uh, uh, you know, Christians or Sikhs or Jews here's, here and there, again, it seems to me this is the point. Of course, to say it is an anti-racist fight is much nearer the truth, but again, I think we have to be specific, because some of it is not just the very crude racism of old that those of us who are active in the 70s uh, would remember. If people now talk about people coming over here and taking all our jobs, they're generally not referring to Muslims, uh, as we saw from the issue originally not a bigger to Julian uh, Duffy, uh, asking the question of where are all these East Europeans coming from, a question which doesn't really require a very elaborate answer. Um, that, uh, uh, it is now not mainly directed, it's directed to other groups uh, of uh, immigrants uh, rather, than, uh, rather than Muslims. So it's not that very crude uh, racism uh, of, um, uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the past. But so again, we need to be specific about why there's a sustained attack on Muslims, on the culture, the right to engage in the politics uh, of society, which stretches in a continuum from the sort of violent attacks and abuse on the streets, uh, which Shamil uh, has mentioned, right over to much more uh, insidious uh, attacks. And some of those uh, insidious attacks do try and play almost on left-wing ideas like, uh, like secularism uh, as being a sort of uh, ultimate value. Uh, which under all circumstances has to be defended. Now, I'm, I'm secular, my ideology has always been secular, uh, and uh, the changes I want to see are for this world, not uh, the next. But I think one also has to say that when secularism is, if you like, prostituted by people like Christopher Hitchens uh, to make the case for uh, wars that have cost the lives of millions of people, one ought to be proud to stand alongside those who do believe uh, in God and stand also for peace uh, and uh, social justice uh, in, the, uh, uh, in, uh, in the world. So we have to take on all these arguments and at the foundation say uh, that uh, Muslims, we are proud to live, work and fight with them. We have to build every point of integration with the Muslim communication, uh, community because we can't fight Islamophobia without the British Muslim community being absolutely alongside us. We have to do that in the anti-war movement and we have done it in the anti-war movement. We also, looking for the head, I think we have to do it in uh, trade unions uh, uh, as well and I just caught the end of uh, John speaking about uh, the Greek uh, crisis and how that might be reproduced here. I mean, how much is it worth to the establishment in this country to have sections, albeit small sections, of the white working class parading through the streets denouncing Muslims uh, when, of course, we are all facing economic uh, crisis and cuts which will affect all sections uh, of the community and this use of Islamophobia to, in a very traditional way, divide the working class uh, is also something we need to uh, oppose. So those are just a few of the ideas. We are going to develop and stop the war uh, coalition in uh, uh, a few weeks' time. But I would say that going ahead, following the general election, uh, this struggle uh, against Islamophobia and solidarity with the Muslim community runs parallel uh, with our struggle against the war in Afghanistan uh, as central issues of our time. Yeah, well, not much to add to what Shamil uh, has just said. It, was, it has been a good discussion, but I do think we have to be careful of any tendency to sort of get from talking about Islamophobia to talking about anti-fascism and the EDL almost sort of moving there automatically without, um, because in a way, talking about anti-fascism and ideology is sort of familiar territory uh, to all of us, uh, and without recognising that actually that they're not the same problem uh, at all, and that uh, in the order of problems, that, you know, or instruments of Islamophobia at the moment, I would say the EDL is far behind the justice system, the state, the political parties, uh, and the media. So a discussion that gets straight on to the question of how do we confront the EDL, which of course is an important discussion, and perhaps one more central to the UAF than, uh, uh, than for us, but it is an important discussion. It's not necessary, it's only dealing with one very small part of a, uh, a very big problem, in my view, for what it's worth, since the question uh, uh, is asked, is that 
if you're going to put all the, uh, the weight on a physical confrontation, you've got to be able to do it. And so far, uh, I, I think we're a long way uh, from that, and that um, it has to be based on a mobilisation of uh, the Muslim community. Uh, you can't imagine, uh, you know, the sort of Cable Street without the Jewish community in East London being mobilised and uh, uh, taking a relatively small number of anti-fascists around the country, not only would they seem to be not prevail in a physical confrontation if one actually developed, it's not actually going to carry the political argument uh, decisively, uh, decisively forward. Um, and you know, anti-fascism, fascism, racism and Islamophobia are interlinked but quite distinct things. Now of course racism um, predated uh, uh, Islamophobia, or the explicit Islamophobia of the last uh, 10 years or so, and when the war on terror is finally defeated, and when we get Islamophobia to abate, there will no doubt still be racism. Uh, and indeed, we can already now see forms of racism against East European migrants, which have obviously nothing to do with Islamophobia. So these are, are distinct uh, things, but the importance of Islamophobia, uh, other than the imperative of general human solidarity of people under attack, is that it is the cutting edge of racism now. Racism is an instrument of social control. It is uh, a, one of the means by which uh, the uh, elite ruling class uh, carry on uh, being able to control society. And a number of points have been made which illustrate aspects of this. I mean, somebody said, I I is it being used as a sort of pretext to bring in legislation that the establishment in Britain and the United States wanted to do anyway? Undoubtedly, yes. Uh, undoubtedly, yes. But it is Islamophobia that is being used uh, to justify that, not a general uh, 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 racism. Is it being used to divide uh, the movement, to try to divide the anti-war movement or to weaken the anti-war movement? Yes, it is. But Stop the War is not suffering from a sort of racist attack, it's suffering from Islamophobic attack in such as that they're trying to drive the Muslims uh, uh, off, uh, uh, off the streets. So it is the cutting edge of this very important instrument of social uh, control, and we have to confront it in all, uh, uh, in all its forms, uh, and not just the sort of... Uh, uh, you know, hooligan fascist element uh, on, uh, on the streets, uh, important though that is. Because I think we're going into uh, you know, a period where these efforts to use racism and social control are likely to intensify and may even stretch beyond its simple uh, role as trying to divide the movement against these neo-colonial uh, wars, if you like. It's, it's been deeply tied into the development of the war on terror, the explicit Islamophobic uh, attacks, and there's absolutely no uh, doubt about that at all. Uh, you know, if you think back 15 years, I can, of course, there's masses of racist attacks uh, on uh, people who are Muslims in this country, but they were they're very seldom couched in Muslim, uh, anti-Muslim, explicitly anti-Muslim terms. That is a result of the wars that we are, uh, that we are fighting against. But if you look ahead, and I come back to this point, I think AD in this presentation just before this session talked about how many more people were now going on demonstrations uh, compared to the past. And you think about how uh, we're heading into this uh, enormous uh, economic crisis of public spending cuts. I know actually we're not in the business of suggesting targets for public spending cuts, but it's simply the Quillam Foundation could be one. Uh, uh, where, uh, no, there was a moment where if, if, if you were a, uh, you know, a Muslim prepared to sell your soul to the establishment, you were guaranteed half a million quid and, uh, and a fancy nameplate uh, to try and uh, build up a pro-war constituency uh, amongst the Muslim community. That has certainly been uh, uh, taxpayers' money poured down the drain. Uh, so uh, I think the Quillam Foundation can join ID cards and Trident. Uh, on the list of things that could be cut with no disadvantage for society at all. But anyway, to get back to the point I was making, that actually, you know, we, we are in a situation where, you know, where we have stopped the war. One of the things we've done, the anti-war movement, is not just us, but it's been largely us, so we have got a much stronger demonstrating culture now in this country, uh, that people are coming on masses of demonstrations. Just think of a year and a half ago, the very angry demonstrations against Israel's uh, attack on Gaza. We are coming into uh, a situation of huge uh, uh, public spending cuts, the struggles, resistance that might create, uh, and 
we must think the establishment have to be pretty worried about this. I mean, they may think that we're not uh, a temperamental southern Europeans like the, uh, like the Greeks and so on. It couldn't happen here, but they may not be relying just on that, and they will use things like the EDL and they will use Islamophobia to try and extend that divisions in our movement uh, into uh, uh, keeping themselves in the saddle uh, uh, going, uh, going forward. So, from every point of view, whichever way you look at it, uh, and the, the main reason isn't, if you like, simply preserving the unity of our movement or our common strength. It is the imperative of human solidarity with people suffering disgusting attacks like the ones, the ones that Shamil has just uh, referred to. We absolutely have to, and I will get the date right this time, uh, 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 put this campaign of solidarity with the Muslim community in opposition to Islamophobia at the heart of our politics on June the 5th and afterwards.